Hi guys, it's Dan here from the Physio Channel. In this video, we're gonna have a look at a musculoskeletal assessment of the breathing pattern, focusing on the joint and muscle movements that occur during a normal breathing pattern. So to begin with, and in the other videos, we've looked at a simple breathing assessment, which included the checking that the breathing in a relaxed condition was quiet and nasal, with about 10 to 14 breathing cycles per minute. The next test was the two hand test, where the upper hand feels for chest expansion, which should be minimal, and the lower hand feels for that diaphragmatic expansion of the abdomen as the diaphragm flattens during inhalation. So to check for diaphragmatic breathing, which is normal relaxed breathing, the upper abdomen should rise and fall during the breathing cycle and the chest should remain in a relaxed state. The next test is the shoulder shrug test, which can give you an indication as to whether the accessory muscles of breathing are overly active during a relaxed breathing pattern. So firstly, you can just look and feel over the top of the shoulders to see if they're rising and falling during a relaxed breathing pattern, which they're not in this case, but if I ask my model just to do an example and relax, with a deep breath, obviously you see those accessory muscles working, but with relaxed breathing, the shoulders should remain in a relaxed state without rising and falling. This next test is known as the MARM test, and I'll put on the screen here what that stands for. And to perform this test, the patient should be sitting in a relaxed position. You then take your thumbs and place those over the upper lumbar and lower thoracic region, so you can feel for spinal extension, and you take your hands and wrap those around the lower ribs with your upper fingers around the lower ribs and your lower fingers coming down just off the floating ribs. So your hands are essentially covering a large surface area so you can really feel what's going on. Now, what you're feeling for here is again, expansion during inhalation, which shows that the diaphragm is flattening and there's a lateral expansion and a posterior expansion you shouldn't feel any extension of the spine, but if they were to breathe using their accessory muscles and breathe more using their upper chest, then you would feel through your thumbs some extension through the spine. So this is the MARM test, and with your hands placed over a large surface area, you can really get a feel for what's going on at a diaphragmatic level, and also with the spinal extension, indicating what's happening with the upper chest as well. This next test is performed in supine, and we're interested in the mechanics of the rib cage, specifically looking for expansion, and also looking for symmetry with that expansion as well. Now we won't tend to get much expansion with relaxed breathing, so we actually want to ask here for some deep breathing. And relax. With the deep breathing, we bring in the accessory muscles and we get the chest to rise and fall. We get much more rib cage expansion. And here we can look at the movement of the rib cage. We can ask them if there's any pain or discomfort or feelings of restriction. We can feel for the symmetry in the rib cage and relax. And then with a relaxed breathing pattern, we should see a rise and fall again of the diaphragm and we shouldn't see any rib flaring or scissoring, which is where the ribs are lifted up, and that can put the diaphragm in a less biomechanically advantageous position. Also from this position, we can look for a phenomenon known as paradoxical breathing, which is where the breathing pattern is the opposite to what it should be. So we've discussed that with inhalation, we should have a rise of the upper abdomen as the diaphragm expands, but what can happen with paradoxical breathing is that the chest expands with inhalation, and then with exhalation, the abdomen actually expands, which is the opposite to the pattern we should see, and therefore that's why it's called paradoxical breathing. From the prone position, we can look for something called the breathing wave, which is where the abdomen rises and then reduces down over the chest, and that's referred to as the breathing wave. If there's an abnormal breathing pattern and the accessory muscles are getting too involved and there's too much chest expansion from this position, you would see a rise and fall from both the upper and lower chest as the whole torso rises and falls as one solid block. Next, from this position, we can have a feel and mobilize the costovertebral joints, asking to see if there's any pain or discomfort with these, 
and also feeling for general mobility as well. It may also be advantageous to come up the center of the thoracic spine, again, feeling for any signs of immobility and also the report of any pain or discomfort during this assessment. In this next test, we're interested in testing the QL quadratus lumborum. That's because the quadratus lumborum has fascial continuity with the diaphragm, and also the quadratus lumborum is a stabilizer of the 12th rib. So if there's any excess tension in the quadratus lumborum, or it's being used excessively, then this can have an influence on the diaphragm and on breathing mechanics. So this simple hip abduction test allows us to have a look at what's going on on the lateral side of the hip here. So I'm going to ask my model to perform some hip abduction, please. And what we should see in a healthy, strong hip is hip abduction with no or minimal side torso flexion. So the QL is stabilizing here, but it's not being used to compensate for weakness in the hip. As an example, if there was weakness in the hip, then the QL would compensate as you can see here, by side flexing the torso in order to bring about and support the abduction movement. Okay, so that's the hip abduction test to look at what's going on in the QL because of its involvement with the diaphragm and the 12th rib. Because the accessory muscles of breathing come from the shoulders up to the neck, it makes sense to also test the neck range of motion to test for any restrictions in the cervical flexors and rotators, and also to look specifically at the scalene muscle group as well. So we can look at rotation to the right and to the left, and then side flexions. And then for the scalenes, to test them more specifically, I'm gonna lie the model down and perform a scalene stretch on each side. So to test the scalenes on the left side, I'm going to want to side flex away from that side, so I'm stretching through the scalenes. And then I'm gonna actually want to rotate the head towards that same side and then increase the side flexion. And that will stretch the scalene muscle group on this side. And then I would also repeat that to the other side, side flexion, rotation towards, and then further side flexion to test for tension in the scalene musculature. One more quick thing to look out for, and that's excessive tone of the rectus abdominis. People that hold high tone in the rectus abdominis, either from doing lots of sit-ups or from trying to stand in a certain posture, can sometimes restrict the motion of their diaphragm if they're holding too much tension through their abdominals. So for that, you can simply ask them about their exercise habits and whether they perform lots of sit-ups on a regular basis. You can look to see if there's an increased tone in the musculature there, and of course have a feel, and when they're relaxed, the abdominal should of course be relaxed. But if they're holding high tone in their abdominals there, then you'll be able to feel that, and that may have a restriction on their rib cage mobility and affect their breathing pattern. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch some more videos on breathing assessment or techniques, please have a look at the videos shown on the screen here. Thanks for watching and please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below.